many ranchers in Idaho have base property where they typically graze cattle or sheep on the home ranch in the winter. In the summer, they graze livestock on public lands managed by the Bureau of Land Management or Forest Service. Both agencies manage livestock grazing by breaking public lands into grazing allotments. Cody Martin of the BLM explains. This map shows all the various grazing allotments that are administered uh, out of the Shoshone Field Office. The solid black lines on this map represent the allotment boundaries, and they're usually permanent fences or geographic features that keep livestock uh, from moving into adjacent uh, grazing allotments. The allotments can be grazed by cattle or sheep or both, and there can be as few as one permittee or multiple permittees that are authorized to graze in each individual allotment. To qualify to graze livestock on public lands, ranchers must first obtain a permit, and then grazing permits have to be renewed every 10 years. Martin explains how the multi-step process works. It starts with an application from the grazing permittee once uh, their permit has expired. Immediately following that, uh, we go out with an interdisciplinary team, and that's comprised of rangeland management specialists, wildlife biologists, archaeologists, botanists, hydrologists and others and they go out and do a land health assessment of that uh, individual grazing allotment to determine the condition and whether or not it's functioning properly. In the third step of the process the BLM writes up a summary report on rangeland health. That's a summary of this land health assessment. Basically it says whether or not a livestock allotment was meeting Idaho standards and guides or not, and whether or not that was a livestock cause. The next step is a more detailed report called an environmental assessment required by the National Environmental Policy Act. Basically, in the environmental assessment, we analyze a range of alternatives, including the existing condition and existing permit as they've been grazing. It's everything from increases to livestock grazing, the decreases, and even analyzes the impacts of no grazing. Basically, it just analyzes all the impacts of grazing on the ground, different levels, what would happen to all the various resources uh, on BLM lands. Following that is a field manager's proposed slash final decision. What that is, is the field manager decides which alternative uh, they prefer based on this analysis, and it could be any one of the alternatives that was previously analyzed in this EA or a combination of both. And that final decision then is set forward and that's what uh, will go on their permit. BLM decisions can be appealed or taken to court by any interested party, environmentalists, or grazing permittees. If there is no appeal, the decision becomes final. But nowadays that is a rarity. Many BLM grazing permit renewal decisions are getting appealed or taken to court. The increased scrutiny has caused the BLM to take more time evaluating grazing permit renewals. Because of litigation, our process it takes longer. Um, we have to gather better data. Uh, we have to do a better job of analyzing uh, cumulative effects. You know, we analyze a wider range of alternatives. We're kind of in a box, you can look at it like that, with regulations, laws, policy, and case precedent being the sides of the box. And every time we get sued and win or lose, our box shape changes a little bit. But uh, with recent litigation, it's been shrinking. In the last two years, 27 BLM grazing permit decisions were appealed in Idaho. In the last four years, 12 lawsuits have been filed against the BLM over grazing decisions. Cary rancher John Peavy said the lawsuits and appeals are preventing the BLM from improving land management. The people who drag the BLM into court are really wasting a lot of money and effort and accomplishing nothing. They're, they're an impediment to good grazing practices, really. Range conservation people that the BLM hires, you know, they're college graduates. They're trained in what's good grazing practices to help the plants uh, improve themselves, how to uh, create a, a range land that will will rejuvenate if a fire comes through, and um, we've lost all that because the BLM is tied up in court and they don't have the money to fight the court cases and do the, the monitoring. In, in a situation where if you've got a bad grazing practice in place, you can't change it. BLM officials agree 
that appeals and lawsuits are slowing the process down with permit renewals. We could always say we need more staff and budget, but we're not going to get it. Peavy says that ranchers can help their own cause and that of the BLM by monitoring range conditions on their own. We're going to start to do our own monitoring, hiring credible uh, uh, people who are, you know, schooled in range science to see how the, the land is reacting. Courtney encourages ranchers to do monitoring work, particularly with photos. I think the biggest help is photos. We can gather a lot of data and then we can get a lot of science, to, science people together and argue about what the data means. but. When you're looking at a photo of a place that's bad and then a photo of the same place that's good and you can say, here's how I changed my management to get here, that, that's hard to argue with. And I think we're doing a better job now of using those photos in our documents. Cody Martin shows what kinds of monitoring data that the BLM collects in the field, starting with riparian vegetation along the Littlewood River. What we're wanting is uh, riparian and wetland vegetation that's controlling erosion, stabilizing the stream banks, uh, shading water areas, and reducing water temperature. This also stabilizes the shorelines and filters sediment. The BLM also monitors streams for water quality. We want to make sure that the uh, surface and groundwater on uh, Idaho public lands comply with Idaho water quality standards. To do that, we'll take water quality samples and take them in and get them tested and making sure that uh, we, d we don't exceed uh, any of their existing parameters and standards. The BLM checks on the health of native plant communities too. We're looking for a healthy, diverse, multiple structures, uh, diverse age class that the native plants are producing seed, they look vigorous. The BLM also does plant transects. Uh, one of the things we do is we just go along and we do a, a, a point intercept transect. We usually do 100 points. We drop the point down and we write, whether it's touching litter, a plant, you know, whether it be a shrub. If it is touching a plant, the, the height of the, the grasses, forbs, and shrubs. And we document that to uh, see if we've got adequate sage grouse habitat. We want to make sure we're providing habitat for nesting for the sage grouse, which is important. We also have to have, if it's a winter habitat area, uh, we want it tall enough that it's not this, the brush isn't totally covered up in the snow. So, so uh, once it gets a certain height, uh, then it becomes suitable winter habitat for sage grouse. The BLM reviews grazing systems with permittees to look for ways to improve management. It might be things like changing the season of use, changing the duration that you're in there having a rest rotation system, moving water away from a resource of concern, something like that. Possibly even installing new range improvements, uh, building fences, or installing new water facilities for better distribution. Cody Martin likes working with permittees to improve rangeland health. I'm able to come out here and uh, feel like I'm making a difference. You know, I, I can work with the permittee and, and these guys that are making a living off this land while still trying to maintain uh, natural ecosystems and make sure that uh, things are taken care of for future generations. Mike Courtney believes the BLM can defend its decisions by doing a thorough job. We are in a tough position. Going back to case precedent, if, if we look at where we've lost and where we've won, I think we have an ability to maneuver through the NEPA process and write decisions that we can defend. And that's one of the reasons why it takes so long. I think we, uh, we, we gather data in a scientifically sound way. We process that data in a sound way. There's always a debate when we're litigated about how it was gathered and how it was used. But by and large, I, I think we do a pretty good job. From what I see, I think we have healthy, pretty healthy rangelands and permittees are more astute and you know, aware because of all the litigation that what is required of them. And I think they do a better job. Their livelihood depends on the health of their allotments. So long term, I think we're going to be in good shape.